Hi you guys, so today we're going to be talking about slope and specifically about whether or not slope is proportional. So we're going to be looking at tables, graphs, and learning how to write an equation for slope. This lesson is one of the most important lessons of slope, um, just understanding how each of these things works with slope. So I want to start on page 183. We're going to take some notes together, so if you'll turn to that in your workbook. Um, it says, a relationship between two quantities is proportional if the ratio between the two quantities is constant. And that means the same. So for instance, we might be looking at 12 over 2, which simplifies down to 6, or maybe 18 over 3 which simplifies down to six. So we're just looking at those equivalent ratios, or we could think of it as equivalent fractions. Two things that will be true about a graph. So here is the graph information. When you come across a graph, you're gonna know if it is proportional, if the graph it um, will be a straight line. So you need to make sure that it looks like a straight line. And the graph will pass through the origin. Now the origin of a coordinate plane or a graph is 0, 0. So the line, the straight line, needs to pass through that point in order for it to be considered proportional. Okay, when we're looking at a table of values, we want to check for equivalent ratios. Remember these. In other words, in a proportional table, the ratio of y over x will always be constant. And again, that constant word just means the same. When you simplify, it becomes the same number. Okay, let's try a problem with this. So this is also on page 183, just at the bottom. It says, Hillary is looking for a gym to join. One gym offers a membership for $25 a month. Use this information to complete the following. So let's do the table first. Complete the table to show the relationship between the number of months at the gym and the total cost of membership. So if we're looking at zero months, um, the cost would be zero dollars because it's $25 a month. The process here in the middle just means what did you do to get that? I did zero times 25 because remember it's $25 per month and we did zero months, so that's zero. If we go one month, the process would be 1 times 25, and the cost is $25. Now I want you guys to recognize again that this represents x and this represents y. Okay, for two months, we would get $50 for our cost. For three months times 25, it would be 75. For four months, it would be a hundred dollars and then it says for X like if we don't know how many months it is how would we figure that out um, it would be X times 25 or 25 X and the cost we don't know so we're just gonna bring that Y down it's just Y <clears throat> what is the slope or rate of change shown in the table? So remember um, a few lessons ago, we could find slope by looking at a table like this. Now it didn't have this process section in the center, but it had the x and y columns. And remember, we subtracted the y's, 25 minus 0 is 25, and that went on the top. The differences of the y's goes on the top. We call that the change in y. And then the change in x goes on the bottom, so we're going to do 1 minus 0, which is 1. So that is our slope, 25 over 1, or we could call it just 25, but usually we have slope in a fraction form. Is the table proportional and explain? Now in order to check, we need to make sure that um, some more of these are also constant. So remember, when we're looking at a table right here, in a table, we want to check, check for equivalent ratios, so we need to make sure that all of these are equivalent. And in order to check that they are equivalent, I'm just going to write y over x, because remember, that's what it asked us right here. We need to know if y over x 
simplified for each of them is the exact same or constant number. So let's do the first one. We have um, 25 for one month. Is that equal to the next one, which is 50 for two months? Or the next one, which is 75 for three months and 100 for four months? Now, if I plugged each of those into the calculator, 25 divided by 1, 50 divided by 2, or plug them in as a fraction and simplified, any way I do it, I'm going to get 25. So each of these has a constant. So yes, our answer is the table proportional yes, and it's because they are the y over x is constant. I ran out of room, so I can't write all of that. Okay, for the graph, uh, using your table of values, create a graph to show the relationship. So we want to graph each of those points. Remember, our first, our x was 0. For 0 months, our y is 0 also. So we're just going to put a little dot on 0, 0. <clears throat> oh, we're going to have this represent months. And this will represent the cost on the side. <clears throat> For one month, we have $25. I'm going to put a dot kind of in there. For two months, the cost was $50. For three months, the cost was $75. For four months, the cost was $100. And we draw a line. Now it says, what is the slope or rate of change? Remember, we learned about how to figure out slope. We find two really good points on corners. So I'm going to pick these two points here. And we see we go rise over run, which is 50 over Two, we rose 50, we went over 2, which simplifies to 25 or 25 over 1. So that's our slope again, which makes sense. It should match the slope here. It's the same information, so the slope should be the same. And then is the graph proportional and explain? Let's look at our rule for graph. The graph needs to form a straight line and it needs to go through the origin, which is 0, 0. So let's check those two things. It does form a straight line and it is it goes through this point zero zero right here that is our key indicator that it is proportional so we're going to say yes and we're going to say straight line and zero zero point okay the next page this is page 184 is actually still talking about the same problem. And now it wants us to write an equation to represent the relationship between X, the number of months at the gym, and Y, the total cost of the membership. We know that the total cost, which they said is Y, is $25 per month. We wanted X to represent the months, X to represent the months, and Y, the total cost. So the total cost is $25 per month. That is our equation, and we will practice that more. Um, but do you see the slope in this equation? And if so, where? And yes, we can see it right there. Um, 25 is the same slope that we got on both the table and the graph, and that's where we would see it in an equation. So what conclusion can we make about, the, about proportional equations? The slope... is always in front of x. So this is a common question. I would give you this equation and I would say, tell me what the slope is. And all you would have to answer is 25 because you know this rule that the slope will be right in front of x. That is the slope. Okay, proportional equations. Um, Let's just finish filling this out. The proportional equations will be written in the form. It's called y equals mx, where m is the slope or rate of change. So this is just the formula or the format for a slope, a proportional slope equation. It will always be y equals the slope times x. m is just one of the letters they use for slope. What do the x and y represent in this equation? Um, they represent different inputs. 
which is X, and outputs. that make ordered pairs. And an ordered pair, for instance, is this. Um, for zero, the input was zero, we got zero out. When the input was one month, we got $25 out. When the input was two, we got $50 out. And I know that's a lot of information, but it all ties together. Um, as we keep practicing. So let's look at um, continuing on page 184. It says, the table below shows the cost of a certain number of pounds of apples. What is the slope or rate of change? So here's how we're going to find the slope. Remember we do y minus y over x minus x. And when we do that, we get on the right hand side, when I subtract those, I get 5.52 and then eight minus four is four. So my slope would be 5.52 over four, which when I plug that in my calculator or divide it, I get 1.38. That is the slope or the rate of change. Remember it is y minus y over x minus x. And we learned that last week. Okay, B, is the table proportional and how do you know? We need to double check that each of the y over x's become are a constant. So we're gonna check all of those. 5.52 over four. Is that fraction or ratio the same as 11.04 over eight? And what I would do is just plug these into my calculator. 5.52 divided by four, 11.04 divided by eight, and etc. I'm gonna plug each of these in and see what I get. And when I get the answer, I find out that yes, they are, they are, oh, let's see, how do we want to write this? Yes, the ratio of y over x is constant. And what I got when I divided each of those, of course, was 1.38. Write an equation for the table. We know that y equals the slope, which is 1.38, that's what we found in A. y equals the slope times x. That's how, if something is, if an equation is proportional, this is how we would write it. y equals the slope times the letter x. Okay, now let's do a graph one. So that's how we would solve a table. Now let's do a graph. Use the graph to answer the following questions. What is the slope or rate of change? Well, we need to find two good points. Remember when we did this before? I'm gonna use this zero, zero point and this point here, because those are both on corners. So we're gonna do rise, which is going up four, that goes on the top, over run, one, two, three. That is my slope, four over three. I could simplify it, but it's really okay. I don't really want a mixed number on that one. Um, so we're just going to leave it as 4 over 3. Is the graph proportional and how do you know? Remember for a graph there are two rules. Is it straight? A straight line? Yes. And does it pass through 0, 0? Here's our 0, 0. So yes. And our reasons are straight line. And origin goes through the origin. Okay, and then write an equation for this graph. All we need is the slope if it's proportional, right? We are going to write y equals the slope, which we decided was 4 over 3 times x. Okay, let's look at our assignment really quickly. It is on page 185 and 186. I want to look at problem number three with you really quickly. It says you're taking an exam in math and you spend five minutes for every two questions you answer on the test. Complete the table to show the relationship between the number of questions and the amount of time spent on the exam. So if you're answering zero questions, of course, um, you're going to spend zero minutes on that exam. If you had two questions, remember it told us two questions takes you five minutes, which I now know four questions would take me 10 minutes. And then I can kind of figure out what goes in the middle of this. Um, for one question, it would take me half the time. So that would be 2.5.
and for three minutes that would be 7.5. We're going to use that information to create a graph, or excuse me, um, yeah, we're going to use the table to make a graph. So using this table, create the graph of the relationship. Be sure to title the graph and label the x and y axis. So usually x will go, well, not usually, always, x is this line down here that goes across. So x is going to be called questions. And we're going to label those 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. You guys will have more space on yours. And then time is y. So y is always the up and down one. And that one is time. And let's just label that by 1 minute, 2 minutes, 3 minutes. I'm sorry, I can't write this small. 4, 5. And we'll just go up by 1. And then you're going to solve the questions on the back you have to ask, answer whether or not these are proportional and explain why. So if we look at number six here, um, it's just giving us that this equation, y equals 19x minus five, is that proportional? Well, does it follow this exact format? That was our rule. It can't have anything after it, which it does. We haven't learned this yet, but we will in the next lesson. This is called the y-intercept, which means it crosses at negative 5 instead of 0. So, no, it's not proportional um, because it has this. That will be my reasoning. All right, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and finish the rest of this assignment.